Welcome everyone to a new episode of What If Cars. In this series, I'm going to release my sick fantasies and also take your requests. By using this car building game as a tool, I'm going to create fictional and alternative universe What If Cars. Should it even be mentioned, you guys know this story pretty well, right? Welcome to one of the greatest automotive failures, Edsel. I have an entire episode lined up for you that goes deep into this story, but I'll keep it short. In the late 50s, the Ford Motor Company announced that they'd start up a new brand to better compete with the rest. After a lot of pre-release hype, Ford revealed a car and division called Edsel. It was an instant flop. The short story goes something along the lines of the car failed because of its hideous design, mostly because of its instantly recognizable and bizarre vertical grille. But there were numerous other reasons going on at the time that made Edsel fail. Sales targets were not reached and after three years Ford pulled the plug out of the costly adventure named Edsel. And so that begs the question, what if Ford decided to keep Edsel all throughout time, until the present day? What would their cars look like? Would they have kept the vertical grill? First and foremost, when it comes to designing the cars and their design language, I have pretty much three options. The first one is the vertical grill approach, like from the original from 1958. The split grill approach, like from the last model year, so 1960. Or an entirely new design language. This is also a scale of likeliness. The first one is rather unlikely as it didn't work. The second and third are the most likely. But I know you guys pretty well and you just want me slapping the vertical grill on the most inappropriate of cars for hilarious end results. And it is tempting. But I'm going to do and try my best based on logical choices and given time frames. Can I get a drum roll? Edzo presents four exclusive cars that celebrate 65 years of automotive heritage. Each of these four cars represent Edzo's great steps in the timeline of the automotive industry. For the 1960s, Edzo selected the Mako, a sports car for the youth. For the 70s, Edzo has chosen the Corsair, the ultimate in personal transportation. For the mid-2000s, Edsel presents the Citation as the pinnacle of traditional American luxury. And for the present day, Edsel presents the Villager, the special edition that celebrates 65 years of technical innovation. The first car is the 1967 Edsel Mako GT, and I already hope that you can tell what it is. In 1965, Ford released the Mustang, a smaller size sports car aimed at younger buyers, but instantly became an automotive cultural icon, better known as the Pony Car. In 1967, Ford released two sister cars of the Mustang, the Mercury Cougar and the Edsel Mako. The Mako name comes from the Mako Shark, one of the fastest fish in the sea as part of the whole name your sports car after a fast animal rage. So you have the Mustang, a horse, the Cougar, a cat, and now the Mako, a fish. When the designers worked on the car, it was based on three ingredients. It had to be based on the first generation Mustang chassis and body, it should feature the recognizable vertical grille, and have European influence in its design. The designers chose to mimic the design of the contemporary BMWs, which also featured verticality in the front end. The front end features the prominent yet subtle vertical grille and two headlights on either side. The headlights are surrounded by an inserted grille. An interesting detail is the Edsel name fully written out just above the center grille. The lower half of the front end is entirely Mustang. The bumpers, the lower grille and the turn signals are all borrowed from the Mustang. The side features more bright work. A subtle badge indicates what engine was chosen. The Mako follows the same engine list as the regular Mustangs, including 6 cylinders and V8 engines of various sizes. And on the rear quarter panel you'll find the Mako inscription. The rear is rather straightforward. Whereas the Mustang has triple vertical taillights on either side, the Cougar has a more American look with full width taillights divided by thin metal bars. The Mako has found a middle of the road solution. Unique is the little letter E badge on top, followed by the conventional chrome bar and conventionally shaped horizontal taillights. It is somewhat of a reference to the Thunderbirds. 
Bumpers are once again that from a Mustang. And below that, a unique backup light and exhaust setup, giving the car a dual exhaust or afterburner and slightly spaced look. As expected of the three cars, the Edsel Mako proved to be the least popular, selling just under 100,000 units each year. For comparison, Mercury sold more than 100,000 Cougars and the Mustang, well you know what happened. The second car celebrates everything that is quintessentially 70s. The Caramel Sandstone 1974 Edsel Corsair Brougham Coupe. The finest in personal luxury traveling. As you can see, the Corsair is an addition to the Ford Thunderbird lineup. It is slotted above the Thunderbird, but just below the Lincoln Continental Mark IV. A gigantic, fuel-thirsty boat. The front end is your typical Ford parts bin. New this year, and the year before, are the massive 5 mph bumpers that Ford use in all their models. Also, the turning signals on the outer corners are standard Ford units. The horizontal grille has a slight hint of mercury in it, and to further differentiate it from its cousins, it doesn't have hidden headlights or separate pods, instead 60s styled round headlights inserted in the grille. So far so good. And yet, the most notable of it all is the center vertical grille. It looks a bit cartoonish, but I can defend its existence. In the early 70s, Ford added some protrusions to their cars, think of the Thunderbirds that came with actual beaks, and the Mercury's with that weird square thing in the front. I cheated a bit with the model years, but to apply a vertical grille that is shaped like the original one from 1958 doesn't come completely out of thin air. And with that, the car has a sense of Studs Blackhawk in it. Plus, there are some other cars out there that had a worse execution of a protruding front end. So all in all, I think it looks quite tasteful for the time period. The side features nothing special other than a thick color-coded vinyl strip that protects the car, which tastefully incorporates the now mandatory front and rear turning signals slash reflectors. On the vinyl roof, we find the Corsair inscription. The rear is heavy and blunt. It has the same slope to it as the Thunderbirds, but added a trapezoid cutout in the middle that houses the license plate and backup lights. Right above that we find the Edsel name spelled out in a classical font and put on a vinyl plaque. On either side of the license plate we find two horizontal tail lights that somewhat follow the shape of the rear end, which is also an ever so slight reference to the earliest tail lights, but also has that flat look that you'll find on some future Thunderbirds. Bumpers are, of course, standard Ford bumpers. The Corsair is one of the most successful models during this decade. The Thunderbird was successful and so was the Lincoln Mark series, and so naturally this Edsel sold well. Engines were either the 429 or 460 cubic inch V8s. For the new millennium, Edsel decided to celebrate the future by being stuck in the old ways. The flagship sedan of the brand was one of the many so-called Panther cars, full-size sedans riding on the Panther platform. These include the Ford Crown Victoria, famous for being a police car and taxi cab, followed by the Mercury Grand Marquis, and finally the Lincoln Town Car. Slotted between the Crown Vic and the Grand Marquis is the Edsel Citation. Much like his brethren, the car still uses its original model name dating back from 1958 for its most luxurious model. Now, to get something straight, there are a few Ford Crown Vicks that have been converted into actual Edsel models. There is a kit out there that lets you modify the front and rear end styling. And yes, the vertical grille is part of it. Now, this is a very limited custom job, but I don't think you can get a vertical grille through the safety regulations these days. So, as of 2005 model year, designers decided to go for a more subtle approach. The Citation is an exact copy of the Crown Vic, but with a little vertical grille piece added that follows the body moldings and doesn't stick out. Where you'd normally find a chrome strip in the front bumper, you'll find chrome stripes that are a subtle nod to the wraparound grille of the 1958 Edsel. The shape follows the shape of the grille. On the side we find chromed window trim, door handles and mirrors. On the seat pillar we find the classic green E-badge and on the rear quarter panel the citation inscription. 
The rear is heavily inspired by the custom job. The tail lights are very unique compared to the rest of the Panther cars and follow the shape of the original 1958 design. Once again, the chrome trim is applied to the rear bumper as it is done on the front to preserve design continuity. The rear license plate and backup lights are inserted in a classically shaped chrome trim piece with the Edsel name spelled out right above it. Much like his brethren, the Citation is the last hurrah of the old-school American sedan. It shares the same V8 engine and engine and transmission layout as all the other cars and sales were fairly strong in the first few years of the new millennium but quickly dropped off. The car was discontinued in 2011. In a strange turn of events, after the recession of 2008, Ford decided that there was no room for Mercury to exist any longer and decided to discontinue the brand in 2011. This to everyone's surprise as it was highly anticipated that Edsel would be axed. No, Ford decided to restructure and made Edsel the replacement brand for Mercury. And so as of today, Ford offers three brands, Ford, Edsel and Lincoln. And as by the company's strategy, the Edsel division no longer offers regular sedans, only crossovers and SUVs. What once was the flagship, the Citation, is now replaced by a full-size SUV that shares many of its components with the Ford Expedition and the Lincoln Navigator. This is the 2023 Edsel Villager 65 edition to celebrate 65 years of Edsel. It's a gigantic SUV that seats 7 people. The car is powered by the 3.5 liter EcoBoost V6 and is made into a slightly adjusted 10 speed automatic transmission dubbed the Teletouch drive system. The front end is fresh, contemporary, bold, but not aggressive. The vertical grille once again has found its way, this time as a blank shape with no grille pattern. The shape proudly shows the Edsel inscription written vertically in bold letters. Like wings sticking out of it, a horizontal light bar goes across the grille and front end to keep up with modern design trends. The headlights feature a complex design and just below that we find white colored turning signals to turn orange as soon as they're activated. The side is simple, chrome door handles, a special 65 anniversary edition badge and also a subtle badge on the C-pillar, it's a chromed shield with the letter E, a throwback to the earliest Edsels. As opposed to the front, the rear end styling is unique, if not radical. In a similar fashion, like the Expedition and especially the Navigator, the rear end is dominated by massive taillights. From the middle we are greeted by the villager badge and license plate and here is where the taillight bar that you also find on some numerous other cars begins. The bar then splits up on both sides creating an inward pointing arrow which is a very direct reference to the Edsel station wagons of the late 50s. Between the red taillights we find the white backup lights and turning signals, both having a triangular shape. I think I flex my design muscles quite well here. All cars seem plausible and have fairly unique, albeit safe, design choices. I managed to get the vertical grille on every car, but in very different ways. So, what do you think? Have I missed the mark or could this very well be an alternative universe? And if it still existed today, what do you think would have happened to it in the future? After all, I don't think it would be anything more than a heavily rebadged and slightly upscale Ford just like Mercury. And we all know what happened. Let me know what you think in the comments.